Now in order to get um, all of the detail in here, we have to start with a background. So what we're going to do is paint the bottom part of our snail a solid color and then we're going to paint the shell part a solid color. So um, there will be detail here, but that's going to come later. So let's go ahead and block in both of these colors. For the shell, I'm just going to use straight burnt sienna and um, put a couple coats on the shell part. And for the bottom part, I'm going to use raw sienna and emerald green. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and start with this color, do both sides, let it dry in between, and then we'll work on the body. The next thing we need to do is create the swirl in our shell, and that's pretty simple. All I did was start here at the bottom with burnt umber, go all the way around, and then stop in the center. And then of course you want to turn around and do the same thing on this side. You start here on the bottom, you come up, come around, and all the way to the center. It's very, very simple, and you don't want to worry about it being perfect because this is kind of a whimsical piece. So as you can see, it's not the same on both sides, but I like it that way. So anyway, that's the next step that we're going to do. For the next part, I'm going to need to use a little bit of white that came with my beautiful 24 color set. So I'm just gonna add that over here to the side. Okay, scoot that over there. And now I'm gonna mix it with the burnt sienna to make a lighter version of that. I like to add a little bit of water just so my paint glides on a little bit easier. But as you can see, it's lighter than the original color now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first striping. And what we're gonna do is start with the front here, go all the way to the back, and so on and so on. So I'll start here in the front and just kind of travel all the way around to the other side. And leaving about the same amount of space in between each stripe. Again, this is kind of a whimsical piece, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I can always come back with the uh, original color and clean it up later if I want to, but I'm not really concerned about it being super perfect. So we just keep going around As you can see, I'm turn it over like this. It's it's kind of coming out a little, uh, not perfect, but I kind of like that. I wanted to keep it 
very um, whimsical looking. I know I keep using that word, but that's really the uh, look I'm going for. So I don't want it to be super perfect. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and now you can see I've done all along the top. So we're just gonna go ahead and now I'm not gonna turn it over and over. I'm just gonna go ahead and work on one side coming up like this. This time I'm giving it a little bit of a curve. Following my swirl, we're getting smaller and smaller, so I have to be a little bit more careful. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So as you can see, I've done both sides, and now I'm gonna take this outside and let it dry really well before I move on. Okay, for the highlights, I'm going to need a little of this lemon yellow, and I'm gonna put it next to my uh, brown tone over here, and I have a little bit more white, because what I'm trying to do is make um, a highlight color for all of my little stripes. So I'm gonna take my number four paintbrush, and let's go ahead and mix the yellow and the white together. And now I'm going to put it in my color over here that I had made with the white and the burnt sienna. So you can see I have a much lighter shade. It's very pretty. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come along the top of my, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna come along the top of each stripe that's on the top of the shell. See how it's already highlighting it? And just continue to go all the way around and this gives it little highlights. Now don't worry if your stripes aren't turning into stripes anymore because we're gonna clean it up when we go to the other side. So I'm gonna turn it around and continue to go around all the way around. So this is basically done, this part here. So what I'd like to do is do all of these right here. So I'm just choosing an area of it right here to go with a lighter shade. And you can already see the how the highlights are lifting it out. I really shouldn't have put it there. So we'll just stop there and I'm going to go around to the other side and do that side. Okay, so I'm done doing my highlights, but I'm going to go one step further. So I'm going to go ahead and take the same yellow and white and mix it with that color so that it's even lighter. We just keep lifting and lifting. Okay, so it's even lighter now. Okay, so now I'm just going to hit it in the center just to give it that nice, like, uh, sunlight glow on it. Just a dab, not a lot. Go all the way around our piece and continue to do the entire snail. Just add one more highlight and continue to do the sides just a little bit, not as much as the first color that you did, almost like a half that size of a stripe. So I'm gonna to continue to finish up the snail. Oops, I did that side again, I wasn't supposed to do it, but it's gonna be cute anyway. So we'll go ahead and turn it around and do the other side. Just those last bit of highlights. It'll make more sense when we get to the end where you'll see the shadowing. So there we go. Now we're gonna work with our second color. Okay, for my second color, I thought I would work with the mauve pale color. And I like mixing um, two shades on each snail, but I, ca I thought this would be really pretty if we go with this really pretty purple color. So what I'm gonna do with this color first is all these dark burnt sienna shades, I'm gonna cover those up 
with this beautiful, beautiful color, this purple color. And so this may take some time, but go ahead and this is a good time to clean up your stripes, make them look a little bit cleaner or you don't have to, you can just leave them kind of wobbly and that's fine too. So I'm gonna go around my entire snail with this purple and then uh, after I get done covering up all these um, dark rusty colors, the uh, burnt sienna, then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the shading where I go with a lighter color each time. So um, let's just go ahead and fill in all those spots. I'll put it um, in time lapse so you don't have to watch me do it slowly because I am going to take my time and really clean it up, okay? Okay, just like what we did with the other color, I'm gonna put a dab of white next to my purple shade and make a lighter shade And I'm gonna go ahead and do my uh, highlights in this really pretty lavender color. So starting with the top, just like I did with the, um, the burnt, um, burnt sienna color, I came around and did the highlights. So you see now I have highlights going all the way around the top of his shell. It's pretty. And this makes it um, lift out throughout instead of just lifting out part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, do all the highlights. I'm going to mix one more light color to do the highlights on top, just like I did with the, the yellow color. So um, again, take your time. Don't try to rush this. You want to um, make sure that, I mean, it's, it's awkward holding this snail and, or these rocks, I should say. So um, that's why you kind of want to take your time. Don't be in a hurry. It's going to be so fun when it's done. Okay, so I'll go ahead and speed things up a little for you so you don't have to watch me do it in real time. Okay, before we defined our swirl a little bit better, as you can see I did it on both sides and both sides are a little bit different. I'm gonna go take this outside in the sun, let it dry really well. We're gonna finish up the shell and then we'll work on the body. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is just kind of define the swirl a little better. So remember that very, very dark burnt umber that we put down here to make the original um, swirl where we're gonna go back to that one. And all I'm gonna do is redraw my swirl just to kind of clean up. It also creates a shadow when I come along here on the sides where the shell actually goes in. So I'll go ahead and just keep going. Just Nothing real thick, just uh, a very soft. So you can see I sort of defined that swirl a little bit better. There we go. So let's do the other side, clean that up. So you see the difference between this side and this side? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I kind of water down my paint a little. I don't want it so thick and we'll start with the outer edge of this shell. Let's kind of clean it up. That's how I like to phrase that part. Let me just wipe off if you're not happy with, I kind of came in a little bit too tight. There we go. There, that looks a lot better. Just kind of coming around here and giving it a little bit of more shadow. And the burnt umber seems to do a really nice job of that. Just kind of glide it here. 
You can always wipe off anything while it's wet. So there we go. So that looks a little bit better now, uh, or it looks, it looks a lot better. So now we're gonna concentrate on the body of uh, our snail because he's just plain green right now and that's not what I wanted it to look like. So let me just finish shadowing this a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so that's a good place to stop. So when we go and start with this body part, we're gonna go back to this original color, but we're gonna mix a lighter version of it. So I don't know if you remember how we made this green, but it was the raw sienna and the emerald green. And look at that, it makes it um, same exact color, but I want a lighter version of this. So I think I'm gonna scoop up some of this yellow that I have over here and white that I use for my snail and create a lighter shade. That's exactly what I want. So I'm just kind of using up what I have. These um, uh, paints are beautiful. Artistro makes a, a very high quality acrylic paint. It goes on very nice. A lot of times I don't even need two coats. So, okay, so let's continue. So all we're going to do is take our number four paintbrush that came in the set and we're going to just dot it on very randomly. You don't wanna make a pattern out of this. Some of the dots are big and some of them are small. And I try to do not so much a dot, but more of like a, an egg shape. But I'm not concerned about it looking perfect. It is a snail and I don't, um, I'm just trying to give the illusion that he has kind of that um, uneven slug kind of look. So let's go ahead and put this in the time lapse so you don't have to watch me do this whole thing because I'm gonna do both sides and even underneath. I may have to let it dry first on the sides before I do underneath, but a lot of times acrylic paint dries pretty fast. So I'm able to accomplish all of it in one, in one try here. So, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to time-lapse. As you can see, um, it's nice and dry. I've got all the little dots done on the body. I don't really put eyes in a mouth. It's kind of more of a, a fun little abstract piece. So um, it looks, they look very good when you put prop them next to a plant because that's what they love. This one I did, I did in like a coral and yellow color and I've done some with purples and blues and pinks. Um, so here's my finished snail. He's so cute on both sides. And I'll just find a place out in the garden to prop him up next to. But I hope you enjoyed this class. Um, you can, if you're going to put them outside, you should probably put at least two coats of a clear water-based varnish on these just to protect them. But if they're going to stay in the house, they're fine just the way they are. So um, enjoy making your snails. Each one is one of a kind and different. And um, just have fun painting rocks. They are so much fun and so therapeutic. And I will be showing you some other fun ideas of what you can do with rocks in my future videos. So thank you for watching. Share with your friends and family. And um, yeah, just keep painting and have fun. God bless and we'll see you next time.